Welcome to another episode of Vital. And today's guest is Dr. Elizabeth Yarnell. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Bob. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. I'm glad to have you on the episode as well. So, Dr. Elizabeth, why don't you give us a little bit of your background as a doctor, you know, where you started, where you, uh, you know, are today, and then kind of what motivated your journey? Excellent. So my journey into the world of health started in 1999 when I went to sleep one night as usual, and I awoke the next morning blind in my right eye. And it turned out I had multiple sclerosis. And uh. yes, and that is actually when I learned that 80% of MS patients experience significant disability within 10 years of diagnosis. So here I was just about to turn 30 and learning that by the time I turned 40, I might be in a wheelchair. So that was a huge motivating factor for me and still is really. Wow. Difficult. So um, at the time, basically the MS doctors all told me that there's not a lot that you can do for MS. They don't really understand autoimmune diseases, hence why they're called autoimmune, that the body is allergic to itself and they don't really understand the mechanisms behind that or why it happens or, or what caused it to start or how to cure it. And um, they showed me charts that showed that MS patients all go on this downhill slope with their quality of life, with their abilities, with um, their body and their functionalities disintegrating really pretty much around them at a steady pace. So that was super depressing. And I said, can, is there anything that I can do to help myself avoid this kind of fate? And they said, no, really, there's a couple of drugs that you can try. They all have pretty toxic side effects. I did try the drugs. I did experience some terrible side effects. I had hives all over my body for three years. Like a good day was 30 hives. A bad day was 300 hives. Um, I, by the time I finally- You say 300 hives? Yes, I was just like one big hive. It was, that is, and was it just painful to do everything at that point? So painful, but not only that, but literally when they would come on my face, they would disfigure my face. So like my whole jaw oh would be God. like big. I couldn't leave the house. Like I, anybody look, I would scare young children if they saw me right now. Um, but yes, it was agonizing all over my body, really super painful and um, uncomfortable all the time. And then finally, um, towards the end of my journey with medication, I started having seizures every time I injected. These were injectable medications. And so I would inject medication and then um, before the needle even came out of my skin, I would start to convulse. So I'm like, you know, this isn't really what my body wants. My body is telling me it doesn't want this at all. And I'm still having MS exacerbations even though I'm taking the medication the way I'm supposed to and so um, it was really my fiance at the time who's now been my husband for 20 years or so he suggested that maybe my diet might have something to do with it and I had to admit I thought maybe he had a point because for the decade of my 20s I had been living as a girl on the go and I'd been eating fast food or food on the run or leftovers from restaurants or just really skipping the meal and then the only staple foods I kept in my apartment were Crystal Light, Diet Coke, and gummy bears. So, oh right, not the healthiest of diets. Maybe not a surprise that after a decade of this, my body would actually give out on me. Um, but I thought he had a point. So I started, that's when I started studying diet, nutrition, and how what we eat affects how we feel. And that connection that's not in some ways not that discussed or certainly wasn't 20 years ago as much. And um, the more I learned, the more I realized that the one thing that these, um, these uh, uh, resources were all saying was the same was that whole foods were better than processed foods. And I thought, okay, well, I can do a whole foods based diet, but I don't know how to cook. And so I started taking cooking classes and started learning, um, watching the Food Network and learning how to cook. And I quickly realized that when you try to cook whole foods or foods from scratch all the time, it's just a tremendous effort. Hence why we invented convenience foods. 
because you end up spending a ton of time in the kitchen preparing foods and then that doesn't even count the amount of time that you spend cleaning up after your foods. So um, I really wanted to help my body feel better and to eat a whole foods based diet and I wasn't sure how I was going to have the energy to do that because fatigue is a hallmark of MS. So one night my husband and I were watching an infomercial on late night TV and the guy says, look, I can make your whole meal in this one countertop appliance. And he puts in dry rice and a can of tomatoes and then he puts a metal grate over it like a barbecue grill grate. And then he puts um, chicken breast on top of that and another grate and then brownies on top of that, covers the whole thing with a dome, plugs it in, turns it on. I was like, wow, that is brilliant. I wanna do something like that, but I don't have any of those barbecue grill grates and I don't have that countertop appliance and I don't really care about the brownies. So I um, went over to my oven and I pulled out a cast iron Dutch oven that we had just received as a wedding gift and I threw in some frozen fish fillets and some vegetables and some herbs that I happened to have from my garden and put it in. I cranked up my oven really almost as high as it would go at 450 degrees because I didn't know how to cook and if you know how to cook you'll be like oh my gosh you would never cook fish at 450 degrees but I did not know um, and in about half an hour it just started to smell like dinner. And so that became the way that we cooked for a while. And um, my college roommate came to visit for a week. And at the end of the week, she asked me to teach her how to cook like that. So I wrote a cookbook. And so I have a cookbook, Glorious One Pot Meals. And it's now sold more than 60,000 copies. And nice. it's been making a resurgence because it's perfect for quarantine cooking. It actually... Um, allows you to tailor your meal to whatever your dietary needs or preferences are each and every time using this method that I actually received a patent on. So it's very, um, makes it quick, easy, quick and easy to make healthy meals any night of the week. Um, so that was how I got started, but I continued my interest in learning and I, I was studying so much that I actually became a naturopathic doctor. And so now what I do is I run a nationwide virtual clinic where I work with multiple sclerosis and other autoimmune suf sufferers to design customized anti-inflammatory diets and other protocols to help them remove the inflammation from their body and live a better life, change the course of their disease. That, that is phenomenal. That's a phenomenal story, by the way. I mean, you can, you can, number one, all the doctors listening out there, right? Our audience, they can probably, whenever I talk to them, the ones that are doing um, what they feel like they love and, and feel like there's really a purpose and a mission behind it, they can really probably resonate with that because I can, right? Which is why, I, like, for instance, when we get into the, the marketing, but I was solving my own issue, my own problem. And now you're giving kind of, you got a curse, you turned it, into a gift and then you're giving it to others. So I love that story. Um, and for the naturopath part, did it, did you kind of just naturally after you wrote the cookbook, you're like, okay, now I want to get even deeper on this because I'm so passionate about what spurred that decision? Pretty much. I mean, I started studying um, while I was writing the cookbook and then I just realized that I was so fascinated by everything I was learning and really it was just so much fun to continue to learn all of this information almost before I knew it, I, I had completed enough classes and courses to get the degree. <laughs> that That's really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know how much schooling that takes, but I imagine that's a lot of, of effort there. And hats off that you were able to write a book, et cetera. So let's go into that. 60,000 copies sold is no small feat. I certainly wouldn't be complaining if uh, my SEO for Doctors book had 60,000 sold. So what did you get out of that? First of all, did you always plan to sell 60,000? Was it a publisher thing? So I spent five years trying to find a um, uh, agent and a publisher to help me publish this cookbook because this was back in the Stone Age, I would say that I wrote it in 2000, so a long, long time ago. And at that time, um, if there wasn't Facebook, there wasn't Amazon, if you were going to self-publish a book, you really were, that meant that you were selling books out of your, the trunk of your car basically. And so I really, really resisted. But then after I got spent five years trying to find agents and publishers and didn't have any luck, 
um, I decided to go ahead and self-publish. And I'm so glad that I did because in the first year, talk about like media, in, not in the first year, in the first month, I was able to land a bunch of television spots and radio spots and I sold out my entire first print run of 2000 copies in the first month of release. Um, got just a ton of press. I was on the local bestsellers list for like three, four months. Um, just really good reception to my cookbook, which was helpful. So I ended up selling 15,000 copies on my own before I sold it. Wow, to that is huge. I mean, learning how to sell just 10,000 plus copies yourself. Did you say, okay, I'm going to spend this X amount of budget? Or did you talk to your agent about a strategy? Or are you just always like a natural go-getter? and a hustler and you're like, okay, I'm just, I just have a huge network. Tell me, yeah, give, give us the gold here when it comes to writing your own books and uh, publishing them. And, and you know, what are your tips for others? Well, I didn't have an agent. I couldn't find an agent or a publisher. So it all had to land to me. So I realized as my book was coming out that it was going to rely on me. And I learned that most self, most books, most, especially most self-published books sell like two or 300 copies really to friends and family. And that's it. And I really wanted my book to have a bigger impact than that. And so that's when I started to really dive deep into learning how to promote my book and how to do publicity. In fact, for a couple of years, I was teaching and um, instructing at publicity workshops for authors and coaching other people on this. I really dove deep into how to do this. And again, this was to, at this point now we're in 2006, 2007. So Amazon just starting Facebook just starting, all these kind of social media things just emerging as platforms. And I was able to really dig into that and make a pretty big, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Impact. Um, yes, an impact, but also just more of a um, presence on the web and really leverage social media and the internet to help sell books. But also I, those were the years that I was presenting live cooking demonstrations a hundred times a year. So wow. I, was, I was hustling my ass off, I will say. I was just moving and shaking and doing everything I possibly could. I was presenting at health fairs. I was presenting at cooking stores. I was just all over the place looking for any chance I could get to really um, showcase what it was that I was offering. I love that, right? So you are a natural go-getter, um, you know, and so you're going to these, and for, and I feel like I'm not as natural, but I still have to put a lot of effort in. So so what would some practical tips be today for somebody like me or, or a doctor listening who has a, maybe they want to write a book that's easy, right? You can get that done on Google Docs, um, publishing it on Amazon. You know, anyone out there, feel free to contact us. We can help you do that for free. It's not too hard to get it on Amazon. But, um, you know, after you write it, what would you say? You should start cold emailing magazines. Um, you should wait till COVID ends and then go to fairs, all the above. What would be your uh, like go-to strategy? So there's so many strategies. People teach entire courses about it. And I'm even in another course right now um, to basically um, refresh my, my strategies and tactics for approaching the media and for bringing more press. I've had a tons of press. I've been on CBS, NBC, ABC, PBS, tons and tons of magazines, tons of local shows all over. It's been a little while because I've kind of, I just in the course of my career, just ups and flows, but it's all kind of starting back up now. And I'm launching a course in September about MS and autoimmunity. Um, so there's all sorts of things happening. So my, I have a couple, I do have a couple of tips and suggestions. Um, one is seek out, seek, if you know nothing about getting publicity and presenting yourself online, seek out a coach or seek out a course that is targeted to that so that you can learn how to create a media presence on your website, what kinds of elements you need to have on there for the media to, to be appealing for you. And then really even to how to cold call the media. I mean, literally, um, I prefer email, but you can literally pick up the phone or email. Producers and bookers are always looking for um, new show guests and show ideas. Um, one of my great tips that's happening right now during this whole quarantine issue is that there's tons of college students out there who are looking for internships to help boost their skills and their knowledge while they're stuck at home and they can't do whatever they had planned to do for this summer. So I currently have six interns right now working wow. with me 
and helping me and they are so fantastic like they're running my social media they're like i am becoming more visible than ever before on so many more platforms and there are so many platforms now where you have to show up all the time i was just on a call recently with a cnn producer and she was saying when she gets a pitch from somebody the first thing she does is she goes to their instagram and i was like oh and she looks for video and i'm thinking i have not put any video on my instagram i put it all on facebook but apparently that's not the place to go so um my interns have been super helpful with that. They're helping me do all kinds of planning for this launch and, and doing that. So I highly recommend interns. One of the ways I got some of my interns is my university, my college reached out with a plea to alumni and said, you know, our students and our alums, our, our recent grads are struggling right now. If you have a business where you can offer employment or internship virtually to um, other students, that would be a great thing we'd really appreciate it and I was like right away wrote back I'm like I can totally offer a digital marketing internship for people and I've gotten so many fantastic students I, I love school. that yeah that's, that's fantastic you know because um I imagine always you know I, I don't know I think it varies state to state like in Washington state I think it depends on what tasks you make interns do etc you know we have different laws so I have to pay them for whatever it's pretty weird over here, but what would be some of your, and, and that internship uh, tip I think is really awesome because right now people haven't thought of that, right? They say, obviously the job market, uh, you know, is, needs to recover. And so it's a great time to hire and, and starting with interns, right? Who, who could use, uh, you know, free labor, everybody. What are some of your, uh, the things that you have them do? Do you assign each of them a different social media channel like Instagram, Twitter, et cetera? So my goal with my interns is I want them to get as much out of this experience as I get. So I give them access to all of my platforms, all of my applications that I use, whether they're social media um, scheduling or um, like click funnels and funnelytics and all these different places where I have different access to different trainings and workshops that I'm a member of as well. So I really try to give them a lot of value out of doing this. And then the first thing I do when I meet them is I ask them, what are you interested in? Are you interested in Facebook? You wanna dive deep into Facebook and run my Facebook groups and, and be my Facebook presence? Or I had one intern and she was super into Pinterest. And so she developed this whole Pinterest identity for me because I had never really paid that much attention to it. And um, she was fantastic, but she only worked in Pinterest. I love that. This is, this is awesome. I think, um, you know, the interns are, are definitely underutilized and I think it's, you know, it's a golden experience. Um, you know, so in terms of, uh, uh, questions you ask them, so you ask them things such as, Hey, you know, what are, what are you interested in, et cetera. What I do for all the people that work with me, of course, also, is I tell them, Hey, let's meet up maybe 30 minutes a week or something. So I can make sure you're getting the most out of this. Um, on the flip side, what kind of groups you, you mentioned workshops, you mentioned Facebook groups. Do you recommend joining any for people? Do you remember, do you recommend any courses or books we should check out for the PR? So right now I'm working with um, Chris Winfield and Jen Gottlieb and they have a program called beyond TV or something like that. So I, I am right now just super enamored with them and, and what they're teaching, what they're offering. It feels really updated. In the past, I've done Brendan Bruchard courses. I've done um, Steve, um, oh, what's his name? National Publicity Summit. Um, I did that. So I've done a lot of courses with a lot of people. So right now I am enamored with Chris and Jen. Um, and I think that they have some really good courses. There are some other people. There's um, a CNN producer named Tamisha I can't remember her last name. And she has a course called Pitcher Perfect, which teaches you how to pitch to the media. Um, there are so many out there. There are so many out there. And if you are, if this is something that you know you need to dive deep into and start to get into developing, I would start with Google and really look around and see, this is such a good time to up your skill level with all these things because everybody's putting their courses online. You don't have to fly to another state and attend a workshop and invest. I mean, when I went to the Brendan Bruchard workshop, 
I, I think I paid $5,000 to attend. It was like three days. And then I had to fly to San Francisco. I had to book a hotel. I had to feed myself and, and everything else while I was there. So it was a significant investment. Whereas right now you could take one of these courses for maybe $600 or something and you could get as much or even more out of it. That's fantastic. And normally, you know, I ask people like how, you know, what do they do during this challenging time to bounce back, et cetera. But I think you've given us so many awesome practical tips, especially on PR and things to do. You know, I mean, people out there listening, you can just simply Google, oh, there's a lot of free content, like, you know, how to get PR through email or cold call. Um, you know, obviously the internship is a lot of great stuff. So this has been um, a lot of value, um, Elizabeth. Where could people find you? Can you, uh, uh, yeah, give us your contact info? Yeah, everything about me is at my website at elizabethyarnell.com. And um, I'm all over social media uh, as Elizabeth Yarnell or Dr. Elizabeth Yarnell, either one. Um, I just really everywhere. So anywhere you want to, the best place to make sure I see a message is to shoot me an email through my website. Fantastic. And you guys, I, I think she gave us the, the one practical tip already, which is, you know, getting the interns. That's, that's, that's huge. Um, anything else, Elizabeth, you think that should be like the one thing people focus on? Um, after they listen to this interview? You know, um, let me, I have um, another intern, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, opportunity that people can look into. It's called genm, G-E-N-M.com, I think it is. And they, it's an internship site. So people who want to learn about digital marketing go there and they post their their um, profiles online and then you can go and for a very minimal membership fee i think it's like 50 dollars a month or something you can go and um, connect with people who want to be interns who are studying digital marketing on their own and want to learn about this and are volunteering to do these free internships for 10 hours a week i love that, that that's that's a lot i mean this is a lot of value here and, and elizabeth so one last time also can you give us the name of your cookbook as well for anybody else interested yeah in fact i usually have one right here here we go it's glorious one pot meals awesome guys well check that cookbook out and check out everything about elizabeth thank you so much and that's another episode of vital doc talk